All right, let's talk about the problems that we ended lecture with. I know that we didn't have enough time to talk about those. Um, so let's take your suggestion and talk about them now. Uh, so I went through this one relatively quickly. I'm sure some of you didn't even get a chance to copy down the structure. Uh, so there's the structure. Let's talk about what happens with it. Again, we said that even though this is a big, scary looking molecule, we just need to focus on the functional groups that we know. All right, we have lithium aluminum hydride. All right, we've been talking about how lithium aluminum hydride reacts uh, with carbonyl compounds. All right, now a couple things about this molecule. Again, the methyl is methyl, so we have two methyl esters. Right, um, down here we have an alcohol, and the other functional groups we have are ethers, benzene ring, and an alkene. All right, the benzene ring, the alkenes, and the ethers are not going to react with any of the um, nucleophiles we've been talking about. One thing that is important to mention is this alcohol. Alcohols are definitely acidic protons, so any of these reagents are going to react with alcohols. Right? So it's important to recognize, and again, we're just going to do some abbreviating because this molecule is so big, when we react an alcohol with lithium aluminum hydride, and I'm just going to draw the aluminum hydride, we don't care about the lithium, that's definitely going to deprotonate so that we form hydrogen gas plus RO minus, right? Doesn't really matter in this reaction because the last step is adding acid. When we add acid, we're just going to protonate that alcohol again and get water plus the alcohol back. So it's going to appear that that alcohol has not undergone a reaction, right? It actually has been deprotonated and then again protonated, right? So again, this theme we talked about in class where these reagents are strong bases, here's another example of it, right? We're not going to focus on that because, again, it appears and nothing happens, but please keep that in mind. All right? We're going to focus on what's going on with this part of the molecule where we have the two esters. All right? That's the part that's important to us. All right? So let's focus our attention there. <coughs> let's do these reactions simultaneously. We have excess lithium aluminum hydride. And again, these this reagent is going to react as if it were H minus. All right, so we're going to form a bond between hydride and the carbonyl in both cases. All right, and then let's look at what we get. All right, so let's just focus on the benzene ring part. And again, we know there's a whole bunch of stuff coming off the bottom of the ring, but that's not important. All right. All right, so we have our two tetrahedral intermediates. These are not stable because they're ester uh, tetrahedral intermediates. All right, so we're going to reform the carbonyl, lose methoxide. All right, so we're going to get two equivalents of OME minus. And then we're going to get two aldehydes. And again, as we've seen in other ester reactions, uh, when we do this, we generate an aldehyde or a ketone, uh, in this case an aldehyde because we're adding a hydride reagent, those aldehydes are going to continue to react with lithium aluminum hydride. So again, we're going to attack the carbonyl with the hydride. All right, so now we formed our second carbon-hydrogen bond on each position, right? And we get to this molecule. There's nothing else that aluminum hydride can do to this molecule. All right, so now it's time to add our acid quench. And again, we'll have plenty of acid to protonate everything. We'll protonate the alcohol, as we mentioned before, <coughs> and we'll protonate the tetrahedral intermediates that we just formed.
So we end up with two primary alcohols. And again, it's important to note that we've added four carbon hydrogen bonds, right? So we've made four hydride additions from lithium hydride to add the hydrogens that are circled, right? Again, they come from hydride. So that's what happened on the first problem, All right? Let me erase this and we'll look at the other three uh, and see how we approach those problems. All right, so we had three alcohols that we were looking at. Let me draw them up here quickly. All right, those are our three targets. As I said in class, I just went through some papers over the last couple of years and picked these out as three compounds that were made using the nucleophiles that we're talking about right now. Right, so when we're thinking about these things, we should be thinking about our strong carbon and strong uh, hydrogen nucleophiles. Right, and I said our goal was to make these from some carbonyl compound. Right, and so what we want to do is look at these molecules and recognize functional groups that we can make with reactions that we know. Right? And if you're beginning to work on the tables that we talked about uh, for your next daily problems, hopefully we'll focus in all of these uh, on the alcohols. Right? Alcohols are great compounds, uh, great products to make uh, from our reactions. And in lab, many of you are making alcohols. Right? And so if we focus on the alcohol group, right, we have several different alcohols. And if we look here, we have the tertiary alcohol, tertiary alcohol, and a secondary alcohol, right? All of these, and the word I uh, mentioned in class today is retron, right? Retron is a functional group in a target that can be made by a reaction, right? And right now, we only know a limited number of reactions, so we're going to have a limited set of retrons. But tertiary alcohols and secondary alcohols are retrons that we can take advantage of. And when we think in the backward direction, we use an arrow that looks like that, right? And our goal is to think backwards to figure out how we can make these sorts of compounds, right? And there are several ways that we can make some of these, right? Let's start with the one on the left. If we think about how to make a tertiary alcohol that has two methyl groups attached to it, one way that comes to mind if we think back to when we did reactions of esters is you can add two equivalents of methyl lithium or methyl grignard to an ester uh, and get a compound that looks like this. So one way to make this compound would be if we started with an ester, and this is how the authors of the paper that I got this from made it. They started with that ester, and they added two equivalents of methyl magnesium bromide. All right, again, methyl the same as CH3. You could also think about making this from a ketone. You could say, well, if I had a ketone, I know that I can take a ketone and add one equivalent of, let's say, methyl lithium and get to the product, all right? So tertiary alcohols, there are several ways that we can make them, especially if they have two of the same group coming off the alcohol. Looking at this compound, it's a tertiary alcohol. All the groups are different. Uh, there's only one way that we can make this from a carbonyl compound.
and that's starting from uh, the ketone on this ring. And we would add that alkene as a Grignard or alkylithium reagent, right? And so we could say that we're just going to add that reagent, which is vinyl lithium, right? And again, just to be clear what this thing is. vinyl lithium, right? That's going to add on the carbons that we need to make that tertiary alcohol, right? And again, I'm not writing it up here, but it's assumed for all these that we're doing an acid quench so that we turn any O- into an alcohol, right? And then we have a secondary alcohol over here, and there's a couple of ways that we can make the secondary alcohol. We could imagine starting from a ketone, And if we had a ketone to make a secondary alcohol, we could add either sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. Either of those could add a hydride to the ketone to give us a secondary alcohol. Right? Or we could imagine starting from an aldehyde. And if we started from an aldehyde, we'd have to add a carbon, and we could add that carbon by adding, again, methyl lithium or methyl magnesium bromide. So there's our methyl Grignard reagent, and again, that will add to make the carbon that we carbon-carbon bond that we want. All right. So again, I hope this helps as you're thinking about how to approach these problems. Again, the goal is to spot a retron, and for us, retrons up here in these molecules are all alcohols. Right? When you work through your tables this weekend, you'll note that other retrons that we're going to be able to make are carboxylic acids, uh, ketone, and amine. Right? So we'll have ways to make those functional groups, and we'll continue to try these complicated problems um, so that we can get used to seeing these big molecules and seeing that all the chemistry we're learning uh, is going to work on simple and complicated molecules.